Attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, uh, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us today for um, the Rapid Online Integration Solution for Salesforce.com and uh, Microsoft Dynamics AX. My name is Keith Merrick. I'm responsible for our sales and partners, uh, sales and operation officer here at Rapid Online. And I have the pleasure to have a couple of colleagues to, uh, together with me today. Um, I have Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Keith. And hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Thomas, and I'm in charge of implementations and support here at Rapid Online, and I'll be handling the Q&A today. So any questions throughout the webinar, just post them in the question section. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thomas. And uh, we also have Beata with us today. Hello, Beata. Hello, Keith, and hello, everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Beate, and I'm a responsible for marketing here at Rapidi Online, and I will be handling some polls today. Thank you. Thank you, Beate. Um, maybe just before we get started, uh, let me just some um, uh, housekeeping notes. Uh, this webinar will be recorded and will be uh, sent to you afterwards. Uh, so please do feel free to share it uh, internally within your organizations. As uh, Thomas has mentioned, uh, you are indeed very welcome to uh, post in your questions and comments on the webinar. Uh, if time allows, we'll address all of them, and if it doesn't, we'll uh, uh, get back to you with our feedback right after uh, this session. Um, then let's get started. Um, as you see, the agenda for today is uh, really to give you the uh, full overview of uh, Rapidly Online uh, as company, uh, and of course, our integration solution between Salesforce.com and uh, Microsoft Dynamics AX. And you would say the um, the take is for you today uh, is really to have um, the full overview of how the integration works and uh, in terms of some condensed information and, and uh, best practices on how to go about integrating Microsoft Dynamics AX. Before we head ahead, uh, just for a quick poll over to my colleague, Beata. Yeah, just to know, get to know you a little bit, uh, please uh, fill in how you would describe yourself. Well, um, Rapid Online, um, we have more than 25 years experience within uh, replication and, and data integration. We are uh, probably uh, one of the few, maybe the sole provider, that actually uh, delivers support and uh, integration solution for all versions of uh, Microsoft Dynamics platforms in, in general and to Microsoft Dynamics AX in particular. Um, we also have a global presence, so we have customers and uh, partners all over the globe, uh, which we're supporting either through partners, but also, and the particular partners, we, we, um, we namely have uh, partners that come in from the Microsoft Dynamics world, and we also, of course, have Microsoft, uh, sorry, the Salesforce partners as well. Um, if I were to mention a couple of things that really makes us who we are at Rapidi, it would be that we deliver a generic, a robust connector that would link your Salesforce.com on one side and Microsoft Dynamics AX on the other. And when I say generic, because this engine as such can be utilized for uh, different purposes, the entire philosophy of our integration platform is really uh, to make a, uh, the integration a task, a simple one, to go about integrating these solutions. 
So user friendliness is really of high importance to uh, Rapidi and everything we do. On top of that connector, we also deliver a, uh, an out-of-a-box business solution. And I'll come back to that business solution in a minute because that's an important item on the agenda today. And uh, these things uh, uh, together, uh, they really enable us to do um, very fast implementations. Uh, and again, also thanks to our methodology that goes there and, um, and, and uh, supports the entire uh, implementation cycle. Uh, we also typically uh, deploy projects either with our partners or directly with customers that has the flexibility to you as our customers to decide. Um, good to know, um, we uh, do have Salesforce uh, Dynamics um, integration to the full, uh, the end-to-end -end solution but uh, the engine also supports uh, different um, uh, systems, business solutions, databases and such. And this could be utilized for instance if you wish to include a, um, a web commerce or uh, a data warehouse or what you might have as a requirement in your, uh, in your uh, uh, company available in that sense. Uh, The solution is also very much scalable in terms of, uh, well, features and, and, and so on, but it also in terms of data volume. So we have um, small, and medium, and very large customers on the platform. And um, so the solution can really scale in that, in that, in that sense, uh, bringing really uh, and meeting your requirements for uh, short and medium and also long term. Um, before we move ahead, it's uh, very important really to give you the, a good understanding of how the architecture is built around uh, Rapidi Online. Uh, typically, it would be, uh, well, the engine itself can handle both on-premise and uh, cloud solutions. Typically, the AX would be either on-prem on -premise or hosted environment. Um, so on the right hand side you will see um, your AX uh, uh, instance and there we deploy our Rapidi connector. The Rapidi connector is a small uh, window service that really does the handshake with your uh, Dynamics AX uh, instance. The Rapidi connector um, only needs an outbound connection. Uh, out of your firewall uh, to reach out or to communicate with Rapidly Online Central Service, which you see on the left-hand side. And Rapidly Online Central Service is really there where you uh, configure, uh, set up, and monitor the entire integration solution. And since it's a cloud platform, then straight to Salesforce is cloud to cloud, so typically it's a web service SSL uh, communication there. Um, the entire platform or the integration solution is an end-to-end uh, an -end solution, uh, which means that um, there is no temporary storage or like. Um, and this also means that the users in both platforms can really uh, rely and trust the data that is residing in both solutions. And this is indeed very important uh, deploying or value added on this integration platform. So the data that is transferred from one system to another is either updated or not updated. And the solution will keep track of that until it is updated. So it is a, an end-to-end. -end. The communication between the Rapidly Connector and Rapidly Online is very powerful. It's the engine that can actually also scale, as I mentioned earlier, volume-wise. So the data there, our protocol that we use encrypt, uh, strips all metadata, encrypts and compresses. So you would say the entire architecture is really built on two major pillars. One is the security and the other one is performance. And this is really the value added uh, deploying our uh, integration platform here. I mentioned earlier that we also deliver on top of that connector, we also deliver a business solution. 
Um, this is uh, uh, the business solution we offer for uh, Dynamics AX and Salesforce. It is very important uh, maybe to start highlighting very clearly that as you know the Dynamics AX platform is, uh, is a platform very uh, flexible where you can customize uh, and uh, uh, yeah, adapt your requirements within the platform and actually you can do the same within Salesforce. It's also a platform where you can do a lot of customization and so on. All these customizations, whether it's one in AX or Salesforce, can easily be added onto this platform. So new fields, new tables, objects, new data structure can easily be added, uh, adapted onto this platform. So in other words, this business solution is a suggestion from our side to get you started quickly. So you might not need all the items here, you might need different directions uh, from one system to another, uh, all these things can be adapted to your needs. So again, a suggestion from our side, which probably will cover 60, 70, maybe 80 percent of your uh, needs and requirements today. So taking it from the top, we have our um, customers to accounts, uh, typically bi-directional. So you can create and add uh, new accounts straight from AX to Salesforce and vice versa. Uh, we could also include the contacts there as well, which typically are contacts uh, maybe generated within Salesforce and mapped over to AX, for instance. Uh, next we have uh, items. Uh, transferred from AX to uh, Salesforce, and then the price. The next is the sale, uh, and we include booked invoices, book credit. from your uh, AX moment. These all be transferred your budget, payment history, and sale history.
environment um, on one side and the data is residing there. Uh, we'll also look at our um, Salesforce environment and how the data is also residing there. And lastly, also the uh, rapidly online central service, the integration platform to share well all these elements that are about the ease of use, simplicity, and so on. Share that with you well. So hopefully this will give you really the full overview of how we do in the uh, integration between Salesforce.com and uh, Microsoft X. Um, for this session today. Um, we um, have um, an AX 2012. Um, first of all, we the communication that um, that or the communication types that we set up between Rapidly Connector, if you recall uh, from the architecture, to the AX environments depend on. Well, first of all, the version of AX we are integrating to, and also the uh, integration uh, type of tasks that we are to perform. So, um, as I stated earlier, uh, we actually support all versions of, uh, of uh, the MTX. So, um, yeah, all the way back to version 3.0, um, 3.5, 4.0, 2009, obviously, and onwards to like this one here, 20. 2012. What is particular um, from 20, 2009 and onwards uh, is that um, Dynamics AX has introduced the web services. So we utilize the web services, of course, as a type of connection here as well. Um, as you probably know, the web services is um, a, a part of the uh, AIF um, application integration framework uh, within AX. And it is uh, imminent really to use, um, especially when creating new uh, records within AX. So having said that, also for updates, for particular updates, but essentially for creating new data. And that is um, uh, particularly interesting because it utilizes all the business logic within AX. So when you create a new customer, you're automatically got all these um, business logic that underlies underneath creating a new customer posting groups and all that stuff. So we use that for um, creation of uh, data within AX. But we also utilize this uh, SQL connector. Um, and the SQL connector is um, very efficient, uh, especially for mass updates. So uh, uh, we really use um, there, again, for keeping up the, especially the performance. Uh, which is a major criteria, really utilize the right type of connection uh, depending on the task we're performing and the version, of course, on, on the AX. So here you have um, the Contoso Europe, um, um, well, from a company called CU um, in AX. And uh, if you open up that um, account, um, you'll see, of course, all the uh, master data information about that uh, particular account. I see here that uh, well, this controls have um, their address in Berlin, uh, and so on. All the information that is residing there. Um, I could also look at the um, postings, or rather, the invoices, the booked invoices that are done for this account. And uh, I can see that there is one here that I can open up and see well uh, all these um, invoice booked invoice lines that are um, linked to the. Uh, this invoice here. Um, so this is really just a snap um, a preview of how data really residing in, in, in AX and also how we deal with the connection types for, for AX. And uh, I'll uh, shift over straight to our um, Salesforce environment. Um, and there well first of all this um, demo setup is actually linked to my AX uh, 2012. Um, and I can see my, I have my Contoso Europe here uh, as well. Um, here really, well first of all, the uh, first thing we'll notice is that the, um, the integration uh, engine is um, built to support uh, 
per default multiple companies and multiple currency and all that stuff. Uh, and this uh, basically means that you can easily have multiple companies within your AX environment um, integrated into one and the same instance in Salesforce, for instance, uh, because we can always, with, this, uh, with our integration engine, we can always detect, well, this customer belongs to this company, so we can e always keep this one-to-one -one linkage uh, uniquely. Um, beside the, well, the general master data you can see here uh, that is deriving straight from uh, our AX 2012 environment, um, then you will notice um, things like our financial information folder here. These are typically things that you will be doing in your AX environments, so based on calculated fields and so on. But all that stuff, we can also perform similar actions in Salesforce environment as well, because we have the data. So you can do stuff like an open balance for that account, you can do your uh, year-to-date sales, last year sales, all that stuff. And this is, has a really uh, a high value to the Salesforce uh, users to have that um, type of information at their fingertips uh, straight from uh, Salesforce. Scrolling down, you'll see some of the elements uh, I went through uh, describing the business solution. So um, you'll see our booked invoices and booked credit memos. So if we take the invoice we looked at in AX, it will be this one. Um, it includes all the elements uh, uh, from AX. So basically all the fields you want to include, they will be there in, 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 in your Salesforce environment. Um, we do what we call intelligent transfers. So when we transfer header, the lines will follow as well. That will avoid having a situation where you will have a header without a line. So you all, all time you will have the full data set uh, in both solutions. But here again you will see all the details really deriving from uh, your AX environment with all the fields that are included within your invo booked invoice lines um, with all the elements you need dimensions here also. So uh, the business solutions actually include the first dimension, but you can easily add as per your requirements how many dimensions you wish to include in your integration. Um, how easy it is, I'll show you that in, in, in a minute. So these are our um, uh, booked uh, invoices and booked credit memos. Uh, moving down, you will also see uh, what we want through your so in terms of payments. Uh, so if you are actually utilizing the AX uh, standard methodology to um, really how to settle your payments against uh, open invoices, then you actually can have that visibility in Salesforce as well. So here you see, well, these payments uh, really have settled my invoice 10, 10, 20, 34. Um, so all this functionality is included uh, out of the box in this business solution here. Um, I also have my sales orders. Well, these are uh, deriving well from AX to Salesforce. But if you can recall, we can also have a different scenario, all depending on your uh, requirements, of course. Um, these sales orders. Uh, will be uh, created as uh, done in AX. Um, this is very valuable information, for instance, if you have a, 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 a produced order uh, type of um, uh, process, then you can really, as a Salesforce user, um, keep track of those uh, open orders with the, all the latest updates that could be the um, yeah, delivery dates could be the, uh, a whole set of, of, of data that is valuable to your uh, customer, uh, especially for the field uh, resources that are standing customer facing. And here you see all the uh, order lines that are included for that particular order. Yeah, again, with all the details that you are used to within your AX environment, so that would be discounts, um, yeah, uh, statistical codes, uh, uh, everything really. 
So that's a, a, a quick overview of the um, some of the objects uh, in the business solution and how it would look like in, in Salesforce. Um, as I stated earlier, as a Salesforce user, the biggest business value really is that when you, you are in, in Salesforce um, uh, on the same, um, while well, you are together with the customer maybe that you have the the full overview of that particular account uh, with all the uh, history, sales history, all the payments that are generated, orders, opportunities and the like. Um, and this is um, real data that is um, that will reside in your Salesforce environment. Uh, and this means that um, Salesforce users will be able to uh, report, dashboard, slice and dice the data as they as they want to. And this is again another um, major uh, business value to uh, integrate in your solutions because it is easy, uh, easier to uh, to create for a simple user uh, create these type of reports and dashboard into Salesforce. Uh, even with the uh, mobile uh, application in Salesforce, you can really do some amazing things. And all these uh, different views, uh, of course, are different uh, depending on the type of task the, the, the user is to perform. But um, uh, it is much, much easier to do that instead of calling or consuming AX uh, either technical resources or financial resources to sort out their business needs. So this is uh, indeed um, um, quite important here in uh, thinking about integrating um, your Dynamics AX with Salesforce. Um, I think that would conclude um, this uh, piece here. So we have seen the AX environment, we have seen the Salesforce environment. And now um, we'll uh, move straight into our uh, Rapidly Online Central Service. So the integration platform. Um, if you can recall, it's a 100% cloud platform. Um, so uh, basically, uh, you will have uh, your different services running on the platform. And uh, when we say service, it's uh, basically uh, a connection type over to, uh, uh, yeah, uh, in this case between Salesforce.com and Dynamics AX. Once the service is up and running, well, you obviously you can start with looking at the dashboard and you can see the status of the different um, tasks that are running within the service if anything needs your attention. Um, so this is quite important um, to have the, a quick overview of the service up and running. Um, when we uh, start a, a connection uh, or integration uh, typically is done by uh, our connection here. And um, again, this might be a little bit uh, technical for some of you, uh, but again, this is really to just to give you the full overview of how easy it is to go about your integration um, uh, task. So on the integration um, connections here, it's a um, it's a straightforward uh, wizard base. You can even say um, setting up your connection in your in your case here between um, AX and um, and Salesforce.com. So uh, if you were take here for instance, just to um, uh, I have an AX environment here. Um, um, start up by defining um, the uh, connection type, uh, building up uh, well uh, a source and destination. And here um, uh, again, it's uh, depending on the version of AX uh, we, we're 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 uh, integrating to. Of course, uh, with our Rapid Connector, you see on the right hand side, you can really set up the uh, a smooth connection there and, and have it up connected. Um, on the web services, um, 
it is um, well straightforward just as easy as the uh, first connection I showed you earlier uh, here I could also add that um, utilizing the web services on our platform is again linked to our major pillars if you recall security and performance so um, on, on, on the security level there normally when you um, publish your uh, web services uh, within AX then you will need to do that outside uh, to the outside world in a sense um, utilizing our integration platform you would only need to do that to our rapid connector on your local network uh, and this is very very important because then you don't jeopardize the security level whatsoever and web services will only be uh, vi uh, visualized at least or published up to the rapid connector and not to uh, the outside world um, Salesforce wise, uh, well, uh, as I mentioned, it's a it's a cloud to cloud straight. Uh, so uh, actually, just the credential of a, a, a connected client is sufficient, and then you can utilize the SSL standard um, protocol there to communicate with the with Salesforce. What we actually do right after connecting. Um, your Dynamics AX to Salesforce. We test it, of course, uh, but we straight uh, forward. We uh, read the design of both solutions, and by reading the design, uh, we really mean all the field uh, names, field types, even uh, table names, the works. Um, with that in hand. Uh, we can really, well, we actually get very well introduced to both solutions. And I'll show you at least some of the features we can utilize this design for uh, later on. So once the connection is built up, um, then we can go um, building up our transfers. And um, our transfers um, the ones that you see here are actually all part of uh, that business solution we went through earlier. Um, we do the integration again performance wise we make sure that it really uh, performs well um, with our best practices. Um, just a hint there that when we wish to add a new um, record into from AX to Salesforce for instance that we do that in a separate transfer and we have another transfer where we add one from Salesforce to AX and the reason for that is really well multiple things but it could be one of the things is um, really make sure well we uh, can also coordinate and really uh, configure the solution so we can identify which is the master uh, system for each type of integration so if you, for instance, change the address um, in, in, in both systems simultaneously, then our engine or you as a customer can actually set up to say, well, in that case, it's AX or Salesforce that needs to re-rule or have the last word say in, in that particular. Uh, so it's really built in with a lot of, um, again, performance, but also um, best practices to get your integration up and running sound and, 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 and safe from, from the very beginning. So in reality, if we are to look at the standard business solution, um, then really it's adapting it to your needs and uh, everything is already uh, pre-developed. So it's really adapting it and having the service up and running very, very fast. If we go and look to um, just one of these transfer here, for instance, um, then you would see, well, we, um, each transfer consists of a set of uh, properties. Uh, you would probably feel that, um, that there are, um, all these properties are very much linked either to the Dynamics AX world or to the Salesforce world. Uh, and this is, of course, coming from our experience in both uh, platforms. 
So you can do a lot of um, features here. Um, uh, I'll show you some of them. Uh, it is all done in that mindset of keeping a robust and at the same time very lean integration. So here, um, well, basically, um, you could of course set up your source and destinations here. You can give in some elements whether you wish to update or add an update and delete and so on on this transfer. And uh, once that is done, then it is saved and, and uh, moved to the next where we, um, I think I mentioned it earlier, but you can actually with our integration platform, it's built on uh, what we call incremental updates. Uh, and incremental updates is really we keep track of the changes that has occurred. So we keep actually um, uh, track of uh, what we only do the transfers that has really uh, the data has changed since the last time we have done the uh, transfers. And this is really a powerful feature, uh, particularly in the integration world because again, uh, well, first of all, it performs very well, and uh, second of all, is you also keep track of, of, of real data at the real time for the, for the users to really uh, have, have direct access to that uh, updated data. So in this particular instance, we, uh, we have, for instance, a one-to-one -one linkage between uh, the account in uh, AX and the uh, uh, the account in, uh, in in Salesforce. We actually build up a, uh, we put in the uh, external ID in Salesforce within your AX environments to have the one one linkage there. Um, then we have our uh, field mapping. Um, these are just, uh, uh, well, part of the standard solution. Uh, but how easy is it really to adapt to your needs. Um, we don't do what we call spaghetti mapping. So you would not need to look at these hundreds and hundreds of fields in both your source and destination to see, well, where, where do you need to map what to what. In our platform, you simply just go in and, uh, well, just to show you an example, you uh, hit new uh, to create a new uh, field. And once you start uh, typing uh, the field you want to have included, then you can see that you can have a selection list. And there you can really see the advantage of us really reading the design, as I mentioned earlier, of both solutions. You can there you can go straight ahead and say, well, I want my um, uh, commission group here, for instance. That's how easy to go. And the same would happen also in your um, uh, Salesforce and destination here, destination environments. So once you start again, um, type in, then you can see all the fields that are matches the criteria you're typing. And this is very, very powerful. Um, it saves time, but also gives you a very lean integration. Um, and, and that's actually it. Uh, add a new field, you just go up here, activate the changes, and have the transfer running, and you have the data flowing from one system to another. That's how easy it is to adapt. Good. Um, you can also see, uh, beside classical field mapping, um, you actually can do a lot of, well, complex, but also very powerful uh, features here. Um, well, one of them is the, our DBLOOKUP feature here, where you basically can utilize the DBLOOKUP to look maybe in, into uh, underneath tables. So if you have a country code, for instance, and you would like to add, grab the name of that country on another table, you can do that in one shot here from the same transfer here. And that's quite, well, handy and quite uh, powerful as well. And then transfer the name over to your destination in one shot. Um, we also have a whole range of formulas for, well, uh, both uh, complex combinations you can set up, you can do logics, data cleansing, uh, the works. Um, again, all this in a philosophy of keeping things um, very simple and also accessible, understandable also for people that are working or uh, maintaining your uh, integration platform. 
So this is a little bit about the, um, the field mapping and how easy it is to go about that. Uh, once the transfers are built up or adapted rather to your requirements, then um, we can go um, straight ahead into building up our grouping. And grouping can be really done for multiple purposes. Uh, the most logical one would be to include your transfers in a, a logical sequence. Well, I want to transfer my master data uh, in one group and then my transaction in another group. So uh, on, on one handy um, comes in when if the uh, one group stops because of an error, then the other group will also run in parallel, for instance. The, you really make sure that you have your customer or your product over before you transfer the transactions for for instance um, and once this grouping is uh, is um, is done uh, straightforward um, you can uh, start uh, scheduling uh, maybe before I uh, share the scheduling with you it's important to note uh, I think I mentioned it uh, well this, this, the platform uh, supports multiple companies and, and multiple currency as I mentioned. We even have a dedicated technology that really um, make use of this multiple company or multiple sources, multiple destinations in a sense that you can, we call it tax, uh, tax technology, um, where you can basically utilize the same transfers over and over again towards different destinations, for instance, this with different variables. And this is extremely powerful, again, in a sense of keeping your integration very simple. Um, back to the scheduling. Um, well, um, very flexible platform. Uh, once you, you can schedule, obviously, a group of transfers or single transfers you can set it up to run as you uh, wish to have it, so daily or every second day or uh, whatever your requirements are. Um, and it is really a set it and forget it platform, so uh, it should be running quite robustly right in the background. But if um, it needs your attention, you can actually, uh, we have a notification engine built in within the solution. Um, and it, quite, uh, it comes quite handy. Uh, to set it up well, um, if a transfer or group of transfer hits an error, then uh, please retry, and here it's set up for 30 minutes, but it could be uh, please retry within an hour or two hours, whatever. And the solution, of course, will do that after that time, the time frame. You can even set it up to say, well, after five hours, as it is here, uh, with unsuccessful uh, transfer, then please notify, and there you can set up a whole range of well groups and uh, in individuals, typically your admin folks, uh, ourselves, your partners also included in that, so that everybody can be on the same page because they will receive a uh, well, simple email with the link that will lead them straight into your service here. Uh, and it's uh, quite uh, powerful, really, because then you can go in straight and have the data rectified uh, or the service up and, and running uh, fairly quickly. Maybe it's worth to mention there that also all the uh, uh, error logs uh, and so on that we uh, use within the platform is all native uh, Dynamics AX or Salesforce. So uh, for you, your partner and ourselves is very easy to go and detect what needs to be rectified and to have the service up and running again. Um, so that's a really an end-to-end an, an -end integration really uh, from the very beginning to, um, well, again, monitoring and uh, keeping track of your uh, service up and running. So with that, um, I uh, hope that you have a, a very good feeling of the, uh, well, the end-to-end -end, uh, solution here. Then with that, I will just um, go back here to, uh, because then we can um, go to the fun part uh, about the pricing. And for the pricing, um, we actually have different editions 
we might as well go to straight to our rapidly.line.com. Uh, um, we have different editions. So for today's session, we open our cloud platform in Euros. And you can see, uh, well, first of all, it's a, a, a software as a service. So it's all subscription based. These here you see these are monthly fees. Um, in order to determine uh, which edition suits your uh, needs, then um, there are a set of uh, parameters that we need to evaluate together with you. Uh, I'll go through the most important ones. Um, uh, first one is obviously the number of uh, applications we're connecting together. So uh, Microsoft Dynamics AX and Salesforce.com, that would make two two endpoints. Let me just come in here, Keith. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has the problem, but uh, uh, it's still on your demo presentation screen. There is the, yep, perfect. Now it came. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. The, um, the next uh, item would be the number of companies within your uh, AX environment. Um, and there, um, yeah, it starts us with two companies and it can go up to standard to 10 and onwards. So that's an important parameter to, 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 uh, to look at. Uh, there is no limits in terms of uh, users in Rapidi, using Rapidi. Um, there are support packages in all. Uh, the business solution uh, we went through earlier is actually included in uh, all editions. Uh, next item would be the update frequency here. And the update frequency here is, um, is how often you want these schedules that you just seen earlier, how often should these schedules be running. So within our basic it starts with an hourly um, uh, update frequency and then to 10 minutes and onwards. Um, you as a customer can also have uh, access to the um, Rapidly Online Central Service, what we call the configuration engine. So you can actually do the changes yourself and have the full uh, uh, access to, to the engine. That starts as of the standard edition. Uh, also, if you can recall earlier, I mentioned um, utilizing the workflow um, from uh, well, either Salesforce or AX um, to get uh, instant transfers. This feature is uh, is this one here, real-time integration, uh, and it starts from the standard edition uh, and onwards. We also have the possibility to have uh, the opportunity to run manual transfers. Um, it's always good to have things scheduled and programmed as such, uh, but it also comes quite handy to be able to run uh, manual transfers uh, when need to be. Uh, we just as there is no limits on the users either on the AX or on the Salesforce environment there is uh, no uh, limits on the data neither. Uh, having said that um, we might um, depending on the data volume we might need to look at, um, at configuring um, some special processes uh, into especially very large volume of data um, also avoiding peak times and so on, maybe setting up uh, some parallel processing, uh, even hybrid deployment there. So again, a whole range of uh, performance um, uh, that we can really utilize to scale your solution if need to be. So this is a, uh, uh, a very quick overview of our different editions. Uh, hopefully it gives you a, a good picture of, of the type of solutions that we are offering uh, today. I think you have seen a lot of things uh, during this session. Uh, just to uh, uh, recap uh, uh, what you have seen. Hopefully, you really get the feeling of, well, first of all, our end-to-end -end solution, uh, where you really have the, um, the total integration covered by uh, our Rapidly Online integration platform. Hopefully, you also seen our vast uh, experience, well, both in 
Dynamics, but also with Salesforce. And very, very important that everything that we have done here, everything we thought for uh, architecture-wise, uh, platform-wise, is really to get you up to speed very quickly uh, with your integration uh, solution. So um, these are, I would say, rapidly online in a nutshell for you. These are really our uh, uh, business added value to you as our uh, customer. With that, I think I will um, hand it over to Thomas, who will be handling our Q&A session. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, you are indeed uh, very welcome to come in and uh, pose any question or query that you uh, might have regarding this integration. Thank you. Over to you, Thomas. Thank you very much, Keith. Um, yeah, got a few in here, and um, I'm going to just start out with the first one here. Um, it is regarding our standard business solutions, if we have any documentation or procedures on uh, what needs to be added to the different systems to accommodate uh, the standard setup. Um, and I'm just going to take the screen from you here, Keith. and show you something here. Uh, Rapidi has a, a quite extensive wiki system where both when setting up transfers, um, etc., um, you have all these links to our wiki system to help you and guide you and explain what thing do, things does. We also have a, what we call a standard integration page where we have like a description of our standard business solution for AX. So in here, uh, you would have a list of fields that needs uh, uh, to be created. And not least, uh, you actually uh, have a full standard object installation uh, to install in Salesforce to accommodate the data like uh, uh, payments, uh, the invoice, invoice lines and such. Those are packages uh, ready to be installed directly in Salesforce. Um, hence, you don't need to, to actually do any development in Salesforce to accommodate uh, uh, that. Uh, anything else is the described uh, in detail. Uh, and going on from there, it's just a question of uh, adaptions and, and special needs that you might have. Um, so I hope that explains that one. Uh, next one, I think, is for you, Keith. Uh, goes on how to get started on a project and how do we typically handle that? Thank you, Jonas. Um, <clears throat> well, when we start a new project, um, well, together with you as our customer, uh, along with a, your preferred partner, maybe, um, then we start off with the, with the well uh, scheduling a workshop, and that workshop is typically a couple of hours session um, where we uh, go through all your um, processes. Uh, workflow, everything really that you require within your integration. After that uh, session, uh, we have a very clear picture, uh, a blueprint, if you wish, of that needs to be deployed uh, for your integration solution. And with that blueprint, uh, we have uh, a whole range of tools, one of which is our Basecamp uh, tool where we really identify all the tasks that needs to be done. Uh, so really who does what when, that would include your resources, partner resources and ourselves of course. So with that in hand, we really have the full visibility and a, a clear roadmap of how to go about the integration. Um, I think uh, hopefully some of the answers uh, the question. I think it does, thank you. Then we got a fresh one here, um, how we synchronize or preserve data, uh, user security uh, classes across the integration. Um, first of all, uh, let me address the, the tr data transfers themselves. We do not intermediately store anything at all uh, on our servers or anything. We uh, read as if you are on uh, AX, uh, we read as a SQL client uh, from AX and data is compressed and packed and goes directly to the central service and is directly communicated towards uh, Salesforce without any intermediate storage. Um, besides that, we are uh, Salesforce uh, certified, uh, so we went through the uh, security checks uh, to become uh, to uh, 
get that certification, sorry, um, which includes encryption of passwords. So uh, if you have the connection pages, Keith showed you if you put in a password there, uh, when saved into the configuration based on, on Central, uh, the um, password is encrypted and, and we cannot uh, um, restore it ourselves to read it. Um, and the same goes locally for the connectors. Any connection parameters that it uses to connect to the central service is also stored in an encrypted manner uh, to enable full security. Uh, in regards to, to user access and stuff, then we behave as native clients. So uh, on uh, the AX side, uh, it would be SQL or Oracle if you have an Oracle-based uh, AX. Uh, Rapidi would have the rights that the user used for the integration has, so you can totally control what it should be able to, to read and write. And the same on the Salesforce side, we use a normal user login and you can, uh, with the Salesforce permissions, control what is accessible and, and, and what is not. I hope that uh, that answers that one. Um, I think we just have time for, for one more. Um, that would probably be for me too. Uh, how long is the typical implementation uh, in regards of our spend? Um, as Keith, uh, Keith again mentioned, we have a, 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 um, the standard business solution setup which we start out using and then we adapt it to, to your custom needs. Maybe you would have a third endpoint or, or whatever, but we would do a, a scoping call. Uh, but a typical implementation uh, at the Rapidi end uh, in regards to our uh, um, consultancy hours would be in the range between 30-40 hours, uh, which is, uh, is quite small compared to, to a lot of other stuff. Uh, so that would be a typical project. We have some that, that goes above that, of course, if there are a lot of uh, uh, customizations, but I have yet not been in a project where it was uh, plus 60, uh, and that was quite uh, quite custom, and the AX was heavily customized also. Yeah, I think that's, um, that basically covers the question so far. Will you Thank round you, it up, Yeah. Thank you so much, Thomas. Thank you to you all um, for your input and queries here. Uh, appreciate it. Um, we would very much like to hear from you. So uh, here's our contact information. So please do go ahead and, and touch base with us. Uh, it will be a pleasure serving you. Um, I should mention that after this session here, you will all receive a, uh, a survey uh, and we'll indeed appreciate if you could uh, help us with your input and uh, yeah, to help us even improve um, uh, our services here. So with that, um, uh, I will, uh, on behalf of the entire uh, Rapidly Online uh, crew members, uh, I wish you a very good uh, afternoon and uh, thank you so much for, for joining today. Thank you.